It's been two days since Subis was rushed to the vets. Now fully recovered, she's back home with the rest of the family, where pregnant Emma shows no signs yet of going into labour and is still looking after Subis's baby. We were all definitely looking out for signs of Subis showing any interest in the youngster. But we never saw her go up and touch the baby. Occasionally she might like sort of wandered past and had a look, but that, that was as far as it went. That bonding between mother and child is very much a physical thing. You know, the holding, um, the, the breastfeeding, all of that is, is a bonding thing. So certainly to miss out on any part of that has an impact. With Emma tending to the newborn, Subis appears content to just care for her two-year-old toddler, Siska. I think it's the million-dollar question, why did Emma sort of take Subis' baby? They're very intelligent animals, and they can really empathise with each other. But, you know, it's just something we'll always really be guessing about. So we don't know what's wrong with Tripper. Um, it could be any of a number of things. It could be genetic, it could be a behavioural issue, it could be any kind of physiological issue. So it's so important that we actually try and find out so we can look after him better in the future. Four-year-old Sumatran orangutan Tripper has been anaesthetised and exploratory tests are beginning to try and find the cause of his physical, developmental problems. An ECG stands for electrocardiogram, and that measures the electrical conductivity across the heart. So if there's any blockage in that electrical charge, that will come up on the trace for us to be able to see, and that indicates that the blood isn't pumping around the body as well as it should be. It's a very small amplitude ECG, so that can either be pericardial effusion or, yeah. It turned out that the main issue was some uh, fibrosis of the heart muscle. His heart contracts very well. Yeah. But his heart valves and how the heart relaxes looks a little bit restrictive. What we can confirm now from Tripper's findings is that he is definitely what we call hypothyroid. The thyroid issues can actually cause the same sorts of heart issues that we've been seeing. So if we can fix the thyroid gland, because he's still developing and young, we should be able to um, uh, hopefully fix the, um, the heart changes. We at least have part of the answer as to why he's the way he is. The vets plan to treat Tripper with a thyroid replacement hormone, and they hope that this will improve his condition long term. Four-year-old Sumatran orangutan Tripper has started a course of medication, and he's finally forming important bonds with his cousins. Emma having a new baby um, is probably going to be a good thing for Tripper. The more independent and active the Tripper is, for his muscle development, um, that can be nothing but good. Sariki has surprised everyone and given birth a month early. She gave birth when we were having tea break and we missed it all because we were sat having a cup of tea. We just really got in. <laughs> Sariki's new baby is a boy, which the team have named Tombol. For the first few weeks, a baby orangutan is all about just cuddling up to mum and suckling. The world is probably just a a massive ginger hair and every so often finding a lactating nipple. <laughs> At the moment, Sariki's a little bit tired. I think the birth sort of taken a little bit out of her and there was a fair amount of blood sort of left over from the birth and she may not have as much energy as she did 10, 20 years ago, so she may just be feeling a little bit more out of it than she 
did previously. But eager to see the new baby, some family members choose to ignore the signs. Everyone is now aware that there's a new little arrival in the, in the building. It's an orangutan's nature anyway to be curious. So obviously now that Squeaky's just appeared with this other little orangutan suddenly, it's like, ooh, what have you got? <laughs> Suriki's in no mood for visitors. But big sister Subis is proving too adventurous for the keepers. She's suddenly gone missing. The keepers check the CCTV cameras for any sign of them. Three, just say I haven't got visual on the cameras at the moment. Chris, 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 she's coming now. She's escaped from her new home and climbed into an area strictly off limits to orangutans. And she's brought the kids along as well. Darren, we have seven orangs in Mumsu. Three are contained in an outside enclosure. Four are loose inside Mumsu. Subis has escaped by forcing a small gap in the fence. We were taken aback a little bit to realise that they would squeeze through an even smaller area than we thought possible. Yeah, it was a bit Houdini-ish. There's an unpredictability about the situation. That individual could be best friends with you through the mesh. And then suddenly you haven't got the bars in the way to protect you, so you've got to treat it like, you know, that animal that you work with day in, day out is dangerous. Subis' adventures could be about to reach new heights. She's heading towards an open skylight, which would let her out into the rest of the zoo. My main consideration is how we're going to contain and return the orangs. There's an escape at Chester Zoo. Orangutan Subis and her children have broken out. They are on a walkway high above their family home. It was a complete role reversal. They were normally where we were and we were where they were. You know 100% what's going to happen. You know, would she return to the enclosure? Is she going to find an iron bar and start smashing the roof to bits? We chain the doors and then we shut the roof fence. And then it's just, we've obviously we've got a really good CCT system in there so we can watch them from a safe distance and work out where we're going to bring them back in. With the skylight to the outside world closed, there is no danger to the public or other animals. They knew they were in the wrong place. They knew that they shouldn't be there. You could see by the look on the face, you, you know, there was almost a, a devilment in, in their eyes on a couple of them. With time on her hands, Subis has decided to try on some rubber gloves for size. They went everywhere that, that the staff go, so they had a look at anything that would move. It's stuff that they watched people do over their time there, then had the opportunity to do them themselves. The fire hydrant cover seems to be all the fashion.
It always amazes you. It amazes you the intelligence of the animals that you're working with, especially those guys. Pulu can only look on while Subis and her children are enjoying their day out. <laughs>